It's been two and a half months since Bernard L. Madoff was picked up and charged with what's believed to be the largest financial fraud in history. Yet we still don't know much more about the alleged $50 billion scam than what Madoff initially told the FBI agents who arrested him. There are still no indictments as federal prosecutors continue to unravel the case and to try and figure out exactly what happened and who all was involved. But the proof that it happened can be found in the ruined lives of thousands of victims. The one person who knows the most and is willing to talk is Harry Markopoulos, the man who figured out Madoff's scheme before anyone else. He sat down with us for his only television interview. Until a few months ago, Harry Markopoulos was an obscure financial analyst and mildly eccentric fraud investigator from Boston, who most people would never notice on the street. My modern Greek hero, how you doing? <laughs> but today he enjoys an almost heroic status, pursued by journalists and movie producers and honored by colleagues as the man who went to the Securities and Exchange Commission and blew the whistle on Bernie Madoff and his $50 billion fraud. Thank you. Thank you. Please take your seat. But he seems uncomfortable with all the attention and knows that he is no hero. Uh, I stand before you a $50 billion failure. Uh, <laughs> How many times did you send material to the SEC? May 2000, October 2001, October, November, and December 2005, then again June 2007, and finally April 2008. So five separate SEC submissions. And in spite of all of the things that you did, it still ended up in disaster. There's nothing to be proud about in this case. I feel horrible about the result. It's been a total disaster for the victims. It began a decade ago when Marco Polis was working for a Boston investment firm. His boss told him that Bernard Madoff, a former chairman of the NASDAQ Stock Exchange, was running a huge unregistered hedge fund that was producing incredible returns. He wanted Harry to reverse engineer its trading strategy and revenue streams so that the firm could duplicate Madoff's results. He had the patina of being a respected citizen, one of the most successful businessmen in New York, and certainly one of the most powerful men on Wall Street. You would never suspect him of fraud unless you knew the math. So, I mean, you're like a math guy, right? I've taken all the calculus courses from integral calculus to differential calculus, as well as linear algebra, and statistics, both normal and non-normal. How long did it take you to figure out that there was something wrong? It took me five minutes to know that it was a fraud. It took me another almost four hours of mathematical modeling to prove that it was a fraud. What were the things that caught your attention? It was the performance line. As we know, that markets go up and down. And his only went up. He had very few down months. Only 4% of the months were down months. And that would be equivalent to a baseball player in the major leagues batting 960 for a year. Clearly impossible. You would suspect cheating immediately. Maybe he was just good. No one's that good. Harry said there were only two plausible explanations. Either Madoff was using insider information to rack up huge profits, or he was running a giant Ponzi scheme. So either way, he was doing something illegal. Either way, I knew he was going to go to prison. In May of 2000, Marco Polis took his suspicions about Bernie Madoff to the Boston office of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Did you have any financial motive? Yes. He was a competitor of mine in 2000 to 2004 while I was still in the industry. And when someone's competing on your playing field, who's a dirty player, you want him tossed off the field. He also thought he might be eligible for a sizable reward if the fraud involved insider trading, but that turned out not to be the case. In your first letter to the SEC back in 2000, you're you know, a little tentative. You say, look, I have no smoking gun. In 2000, it was more theoretical. In 2001, it was a little bit more real. By 2005, I had 29 red flags that you just couldn't miss on. By, by 2005, the degree of certainty was approaching 100%. Over time, and with some simple math calculations, Marco Polis concluded that for Madoff to execute the trading strategy he said he was using, he would have had to buy more options on the Chicago Options Exchange than actually existed. Yet he says no one he spoke to there remembered making a single trade with Bernie Madoff's fund. I would talk to the people I had trading relationships with and ask, 
did you have a trading relationship with Mr. Bernard Madoff? And they all said, no, we don't think he's for real. Did you find anybody? I found no one that ever traded with Mr. Madoff, and I traded with the largest equity derivatives firms in the world. And that's because Madoff's investment fund never actually made any trades, at least going back to 1993 and probably further. A fact confirmed last week at a meeting of Madoff investors by the trustee charged with liquidating his assets. No one knew the depth of the fraud, but a lot of people had questions. Who else figured this out besides you? I would say that hundreds of people suspected something was amiss with the Madoff operation. If you look at who the victims were not, you'll notice that the major firms on Wall Street had no money with Mr. Madoff. I mean, you write in the, this is the letter I'm quoting from the letter to the Securities and Exchange Commission, red flag number 20. Madoff is suspected of being a fraud by some of the world's largest, most sophisticated financial services firms. And then you list some of the firms. Yes, I do. The biggest firms on Wall Street in conversations with people high up in those firms. That is correct. And the SEC ignored that. Did they call any of these people? All the SEC had to do was pick up the phone. They never did. If you had executives at, at the biggest investment houses in Wall Street that knew something was wrong, why do you think they didn't go to the SEC? Because people in glass houses don't throw stones, and self-regulation on Wall Street doesn't work. In January 2006, the New York Office of the Securities and Exchange Commission finally opened a case file to look into Harry's allegations about Bernie Madoff. Despite uncovering evidence that Madoff had misled them about his investment activities, the SEC closed the case 11 months later without ever opening a formal investigation. The staff said there was no evidence of fraud. What I found out from my dealings with the SEC over eight and a half years is that their people are totally untrained in finance, they're unschooled, 